The intoxicating blend of nascent talent and swift ascendancy can often prove perilous. This phenomenon has ensnared numerous artists, leaving them vulnerable to the more sinister aspects of the limelight. Wesley Snipes is a case in point. He's purportedly shed light on the clandestine realities lurking behind the scenes, particularly following his star turn in the seminal New Jack City. Snipes, a fixture in numerous box office successes and the iconic lead in films such as Jungle Fever and the universally celebrated Blade series, ascended to such heights of fame that he ventured into establishing his own production house, a Men Ray Films. Unbeknownst to many, Snipes was out earning contemporaries like Denzel Washington, albeit with little fanfare. Yet, Snipes harbors no illusions about the complexities entwined with navigating the zenith of one's career in the arts. In a candid dialogue, he reflected on the bewildering realm of celebrity, a domain few understand and even fewer can adeptly navigate, especially those thrust into its vortex at a tender age. Drawing from his own journey, Snipes recounted the pivotal moment New Jack City was presented to him during the dawn of his career. Accepting the role catapulted him directly into the limelight, bestowing upon him both stardom and wealth prematurely. In a revealing conversation with Page Six, the seasoned actor, now 59, voiced the challenges celebrities face in carving out moments of solitude. According to Snipes, the constant demand to be on to perform, to engage, to respond leaves little room for the quiet introspection that every individual, public figure or not, occasionally craves. Snipes delved into the disruptive impact that sudden fame can exert on personal relationships. It wasn't so much within my own family, he disclosed, but the effect was palpable amongst my circle, especially those newly anointed with fame and fortune. The celebrated talent found himself besieged by sycophants, drawn solely by the allure of his success. You're swarmed by voices, he lamented, each professing their loyalty, all claiming to have your best interests at heart. But amidst the cacophony, the genuine advice, the truth, becomes a rare commodity. As the conversation deepened, Snipes, known for his role in The Expendables 3, touched upon the misunderstood complexities of life in the spotlight. Navigating his newfound existence proved daunting, leading to instances where the balance eluded him, thus exposing him to the industry's more nefarious facets. Snipes' outspoken nature, his refusal to be silenced, might have inadvertently accelerated the downturn of his career trajectory. He then broached the subject of systemic bias within the entertainment sector. The issue is real, Snipes affirmed, echoing the sentiments of numerous colleagues who have also taken a stand against the pervasive discrimination. He painted Hollywood as an ecosystem predominantly tailored for white talents, leaving minorities to vie for the sparse roles specifically earmarked for them. From the outset, the script is written with white actors in mind, barring those penned by black scribes, like Spike Lee. Snipes shared with Che Kim of the Chicago Sun-Times back in 1991. This industry bias, he observed, leads to a cinematic landscape alarmingly devoid of diversity. The resounding success of New Jack City had the producers clamoring for a sequel, with hopes of Snipes reprising his iconic role. However, Snipes distanced himself from the project. I have no ties to it, he asserted to Brooke Obi of Shadow and Act, emphasizing his belief in leaving well-received works undisturbed. Why revisit a narrative anchored in a bygone era to once again delve into drug culture narratives? He questioned, revealing his staunch refusal despite overtures from the production team. My refusal has become a refrain, Snipes remarked decisively closing the chapter on the possibility of his involvement in a sequel. A pivotal event in Snipes' life underscored the challenges African-American artists confront within the industry. In 1991, a misidentification led to his wrongful arrest on suspicion of auto theft, an experience that not only humiliated him, but also spotlighted the systemic prejudices at play 